it's Erin here, one of the environmental educators here at Wilson Wildlife Preserving Park. If you're tuning into this video, you're here for our virtual Monarch Walk that I'll be taking you along the trails here at the Camp Saratoga Parcel. We have our other environmental educator, Tori, right behind the camera. Say hi, Tori! <laughs> who will be filming this walk for us today. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with us, Bolton Wildlife Preserve and Park is a nonprofit organization dedicated to conserving natural settings and ecological systems while providing opportunities for environmental education and outdoor recreation. So today, along on our walk, we are going to be scanning the meadow in hopes of seeing some monarch butterflies fly around. And I'll stop at certain point, points along the way to discuss their migration patterns, their habitat, predators, and all these other fun facts that I have in store for you. So let's head out. So here in the meadow, uh, we see monarchs all the time. Uh, for those of you who may have never seen a monarch before, I've got a diagram right here. If Tori can zoom into this bottom photo, you'll see that the monarch is a tawny orange color that has uh, veins and margins that are black in color with two series of white dots along the margins. You'll see that the male and the female monarchs are quite similar, but there is one major identifiable difference uh, that you can spot out to help tell the difference between the two. I'll give you guys a second to see if you can spot it. So right here on the males, the males have these two black dots that the females do not. These two black tots, uh, dots are where the males will release pheromones in order to attract mates. The ma female is also a tiny bit smaller than the male and the veins are also a little bit wider. But as they're flying around so fast, it's really hard to see those characteristics. So I always look for those two black dots. Originally classified in 1874, the monarch got its name due to the large size and its vast domain. Uh, those who were studying it at the time were reminded of the kings and queens, also large prominent figures who ruled over a large area of land. Monarchs can be found. Um, let's stop right here, real quick. Yeah. Monarchs can be found uh, from North America, Canada, all the way down to the northern part of Southern America. Uh, they're also found in Australia, New Zealand, Bermuda, and many more places. We're gonna Ooh. pause real quick yeah. so Eric can put on our mask because we have other people on the trail. Thanks for that. Yep, so when we see other people on the trail right now, the best thing to do is put on a face mask and step aside to allow them to walk past you. So we'll take a second to just look around and maybe we'll see something in the meantime. Hi guys. It's great to see other people out here on the trail. So one major reason that we have uh, monarchs here or in any of those places that I just listed, it's because those are areas where common milkweed grows. Uh, the common milkweed plant and also butterfly milkweed, are they strongly influence the presence of monarchs because they actually play a very important role in each stage of the monarch life cycle. The common milkweed is the major food source of the caterpillar of the monarch butterfly. So you're going to need to have uh, that plant if in your area if you're hoping to see monarchs. And we've got plenty of that here in the meadow, which makes it a great space for them. Let me know if, when they get close. Yeah. <laughs> so the monarch uh, actually gets... Oops, we have other people coming. You want to talk right here while they pass? Yeah, I'd like that. I have some things I can show you. <clears throat> so besides eating the leaves of the common milkweed, uh, 
the caterpillar actually gets a defense mechanism from this plant. There are chemicals in the leaves of the milkweed uh, that actually build up inside the monarch caterpillar as they eat it. And when they become a butterfly, those chemicals actually make uh, it poisonous to different animals such as lizards, birds, mice, and other things. Hi guys! Hi. Hi. <laughs> and frogs and whatnot. So uh, this plant gives them that great defense mechanism. And not only do the monarchs benefit from this, but other types of butterflies have tried to copy them and get in on the action. So I'll show you guys uh, a picture of a very common lookalike that is often confused to be a monarch, um, but they're not. They're no known as viceroys. If you can zoom in right here. On the top, we have a viceroy butterfly. And on the bottom, you'll see a monarch. And I'll give you guys a second to see if you can spot the difference. So you'll notice that the viceroy here has a horizontal line on the under wings, while the monarch does not. Everything else is pretty much the same. So these viceroys will benefit because animals such as frogs and birds won't want to go after the viceroy thinking that it's a poisonous monarch. So they too um, benefit from th those chemicals that are eaten. Here I have also pictured uh, a butterfly milkweed in bloom. You'll typically see that on the trails here as well, but I think it's a little bit past uh, bloom. A lot of the milkweed is already begun to dry up. So while when that happens in the fall, monarchs will actually seek out goldenrod, which you can see here, and they'll use this as a food source as well. Step on the side of me. I think this is a great time to talk about the life cycle. Do you, th you think it's okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so here I have a diagram of the life cycle of the monarch butterfly. So starting off, the females will lay uh, once they hatch and they get food and they find mates, uh, they will lay 400 eggs on separate uh, butterfly milkweed leaves. They lay it on the underside and as you can see here, they are as small as a pinpoint. After about four days, that egg will hatch and a tiny caterpillar is gonna come out. Within the next two weeks, this caterpillar is not gonna do much else other than eat the leaves of the butterfly milkweed to get big and strong and ready for that transformation uh, that happens in the chrysalis. So while uh, in the chrysalis phase, uh, they'll be in that phase for about 10 days, it really seems like it's a time of no change, but it's actually a time where uh, of rapid transformation. Hello. Hello, how are you guys? How far is the parking lot? Uh, not far at all. You're about to hit it. That's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> have a great day. I actually have a great other picture I'd like to show you guys. So when the monarch caterpillar is going to hit the next stage of cr into its chrysalis, a lot of people are, uh, they believe that they spin a cocoon and then crawl inside, but that's actually not what happens. The caterpillar will end up hanging upside down from the underside of a leaf or a stem of the milkweed, and they're gonna make this J shape. They'll hang out in that J shape for about 24 hours or so until they're ready to transform. This caterpillar is actually going to uh, burst open from its head and this green chrysalis is gonna start to wriggle out. And it really wriggles around a whole bunch. And that skin is gonna shed off, you'll see here. And eventually it'll become still and it's going to harden. Now after 10 days in that chrysalis, uh, the outside is gonna start to become transparent. And that's when you know it's gonna be about 24 hours before the butterfly emerges. 
you'll see here the butterfly emerging and it just came out of this really tiny chrysalis so it's all crumpled up together and small so that monarch is going to hang upside down and it's going to pump up its wings with fluid and then hang there and dry and it'll be just about a few hours before that butterfly is ready to take flight pretty awesome right <laughs> So let's walk down uh, the trail a little bit, see if we can spot anything, and I've got more to talk about. Lots of visitors on the trail today. <laughs> Which is great, yeah. Oh, yeah. Taking a second to see if I could spot anything. All right. So, if you like to step over to the side. Okay. All right. So. I'd like to also talk about the migration patterns of the monarch because it is so fascinating and actually kind of confusing. So we're gonna go over this quickly. Let's see. So the monarch butterfly migrates for two reasons. They cannot withstand the cold temperatures of the north and central continental climates in the winter. In addition, the larval plants, the milkweed, do not grow in their overwintering sites. So the spring generation has to fly back north to places where these plants are plentiful. Starting in the south, the first generation will hatch and live two to six weeks as adults. The females will lead the butterflies as they begin their journey north from Mexico. The second generation continues the journey, laying eggs and dying. The third and fourth generations hatch through spring and summer, finishing the journey. At the end of summer, a special super generation hatches. These butterflies live anywhere from six to nine months, so much longer than the first three generations. And as fall begins, they are gonna to, um, they'll live six to nine months, and as fall begins and it gets colder, this super generation is actually going to make the entire 2,800 mile trip to Mexico all on their own. So they live much longer and they travel much farther. So I want to show you this quick diagram. I've got so many of them. <laughs> because I know that was a lot of information. This will show you how you've got your first generation going north, your second generation going north, your third ends up north gives birth to that fourth generation, that super generation, who's going to travel all the way back down to the Oyamel fir tree forest of Mexico, and that's where they're going to overwinter. 10%. Hmm? 10%. Okay. So, I did come prepared, uh, just in case you didn't see any monarchs, I do have some of my own that we're gonna release together right now. I'd like to mention the amazing work that the organization Monarch Watch does, and that's what I've been participating in at the office. Monarch Watch is a volunteer-based citizen science organization that tracks the fall migration of monarchs. It's uh, really simple. You, they will send you little uh, tags, they're little tiny stickers, that you're going to put on the underside of the wing of your monarchs, and that's uh, and that will help for when you release them. We hope that someone, wherever they end up, will find them and see the sticker and would be able to upload the location where it was found. And that's the way you'll be able to see how far they traveled. So I've already put the stickers on these butterflies, but I'm gonna let you zoom up and see it, and then we're gonna let them go. So I've got both a male and a female in here. Uh, I believe this one's the male. Oops. I'm gonna grab him. <laughs> one flies away, that's okay. Oh, there he is. There he is. 
So you'll see right here that there's that sticker. <laughs> and then when he's not so camera shy, he'll probably fly away. Hello. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? So I'll open this up while he's getting ready. And maybe she. And get a close up here. Yeah, here we go. So if you are interested in participating in Monarch Watch, uh, the materials are not expensive at all. All you have to do is go to monarchwatch.org and you can order these tags and do this yourself. Um, they also have a milkweed market shop. A lot of times people ask me where they can get milkweed seeds so they can create a, a habitat for monarchs in their backyard. So on that website, you'll also be able to get little seedlings of uh, milkweed if you're interested in doing something like that. These guys just love the camera, don't they? <laughs> they really do. So we've got a male. Yep, this one's the male. You see and those black female. dots right there? And then the female. And, oh, go, go on, go get her. <laughs> so I'd like to thank everyone for attending this monarch walk with me and Tori and these monarchs right here. If you are interested in keeping up to date with upcoming programs and events, you can find all that information on our website, which is wolfenpreserve.org, or you can stay tuned by following this Facebook page. We keep it pretty up to date. In addition, if you have an Instagram, we have one too, and you can follow us by searching Wolfen Preserve. Thanks everybody.